In this video, I demonstrate how to create a forgotten your password workflow and uh, the UI elements required uh, on an existing login page. And we're going to approach this in a way that strives to be uh, really friendly to the user without asking them to re-enter uh, additional bits of information uh, or re sorry, re-enter previously entered bits of information such as the email address. So uh, we have the login form here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to set up a series of workflows that uses custom states in order uh, for when this button is clicked uh, to hide password um, and then use the email address that's already been entered and, and perhaps also uh, check that that's valid uh, and um, change the action of this button. Uh, so let's uh, go into it. Um, so I'm going to use the, uh, the parent group here. I'll just call this container. Uh, as the place to store my uh, custom state. Uh, so, um, forgotten password, and then uh, this is going to be uh, a yes, no, or a Boolean, um, and the default is going to be no, so when the page loads, it won't be activated. Uh, and then we set up a workflow off this button, uh, this piece of text, and turn it effectively into a button. Um, for the container, forgotten password is yes. Okay. Uh, then we want to hide the password field because we want the form to be adapted so that it only has an email field now. Um, so uh, in here we say collapse when hidden. We can even uh, animate it and uh, we'll just go for a conditional statement here. Uh, so the container password forgotten is yes and then this element is visible and we leave it unchecked because then it says the element isn't visible if this statement is correct uh, we then need to adjust our button here um, to say uh, it's the same thing when uh, container forgotten password and the one of the reasons I'm using conditional statements here rather than show hide workflows in um, in the workflow editor is uh, is one thing is just personal preference, but also I think that it limits the number of steps you need to take, you know, because to, to show and hide one element and then so to, you know, to hide an element and then to show another, it's two steps of workflow, whereas you can just do it using a, a conditional statement here. So we change the text to uh, send password reset email and we just can toggle that on to check that it all looks OK. Brilliant. Uh, let's test that. Okay, right, so we also want to remove the button. Something that I didn't think of. Let's try that again. Brilliant. Okay, now let's work on uh, our workflows. So uh, I've not set up the default login one, so let's quickly do that. Login user, um, email address, password. Okay, and then we'll say only when container forgotten password is no. Okay, then we can duplicate this because we're going to do the invert of it. Uh, and this time we're going to say when the button is clicked uh, to do a send password reset email. And the email is going to be sent to the uh, input uh, email address. Yeah. If you have set up your own transactional email provider um, and you're not using uh, the Bubbles built in. I think it's um, Sending Grid or Sending Blue, one of those providers uh, that you set through settings. Um, then you can tick this box and you can add uh, uh, your um, having set it up to the API connector. You can add your own transactional email send uh, action here. Um, but for here, for this demonstration, um, we're just going to have it send uh, the template here and assume that you've got the uh, email integration. Um, in the 
settings domain tab once you've added your domain you're able to uh, add email settings uh, you need to do that uh, certainly if your um, app is going live in order to increase the um, deliverability and uh, decrease the likelihood of your uh, emails going into spam which will really annoy your users um, so back to our workflow uh, we want to send the password reset email uh, I'd then suggest that we hide the button um, that way they can't keep clicking it over and over again um, I think we've incorporated two features here that make the process easier for users um, because there are two things that frustrate me uh, with uh, some websites the the UI that they um, offer for a password reset one is that you have to re-enter your email address uh, and then the um, the other is that uh, it doesn't tell you once you've hit the, the button to send the reset email, you can't see the email address that it's sent to. So you're sat there waiting, thinking, it has it gone into spam? Has it really sent? Uh, did I mistype the email address to begin with? So let's test this out. Um, so uh, Okay, and then log in, and that is going to cause an error because yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work. Uh, so then we go forgotten uh, and send uh, password reset email. Okay. Now, I think there's one other thing we can do. We can add in a little message. Uh, so I'm just going to put that right at the bottom. Um, please check your inbox okay and what we will do to just make that look slightly nicer is uh, with the the login we want it to collapse on height I think that was one of the reasons that this box appeared really big we'll just get rid of them in height to make sure of that uh, and then here we also want collapse on height. We don't want it to uh, be visible on page load, um, but we will uh, add it in here, element show text. So we will be releasing some videos shortly uh, about different transactional email providers. Uh, my favorite uh, is Postmark. Um, that's on my list of videos to create, um, yeah, brilliant, there we go. So we uh, cut down the number of steps that the user has to take uh, and uh, we give a clear message that uh, what they should expect having taken the action um, and uh, they can't keep uh, spamming, well, spamming themselves, they can't keep spamming uh, our button because we've removed the button and we've shown the email address that the password reset has been sent to. Thank you.